Hi, I'm Eileen Roach from Designs and Machine Embroidery, and I'm so excited to be here with you today. You know, I've spent 20 years talking about machine embroidery, and I'm still as passionate today as I was 20 years ago. In fact, it's gotten even more fun. The hoops get bigger, the thread selection is amazing, and those quilting and embroidery designs are endless. Today, we're going to talk about quilting small projects with big impact. I'm going to go over the different factors that are involved fabric selection, like how to use a large scale print, a mini print or micro print, and then of course tone on tone, which is probably my favorite. We're going to talk about the different embroidery designs and how to multiply your stash and get more than you know you think you already have in your library. And then we'll look at some thread and see how the different threads on the same fabric really make a difference with your quilting. Finally, we'll talk about prepping that quilt sandwich and getting it in the hoop. So we'll move over to camera B in just a moment, as soon as I can check out the comments here to make sure that you can hear me and see me, because we always know that's a little bit of a challenge in the beginning. And you know, as I wait for that to come up, um, there we go, we're live now. I have uh, a copy of our most recent issue of Dime, which is Designs and Machine Embroidery, and has that beautiful quilt on the cover from my friend Janetta Sims, who I met in a quilt shop. If you take a moment to read this article, you'll find out that there's a lot of talent in quilt shops and sewing machine retailers all over America, and you just never know who you're standing next to. Okay, so let's see. Um, if you're online with us now, if you could just kind of give me a thumbs up or a smiley face, then I'll know that you can hear and that the sound is good. Okay, we got a couple people and a comment or two would be um, really helpful before we move over to camera B and get started. Hi, Janice, you're from, uh, from Kansas. Good to have you here. And Sue Brown, thanks for joining in. We can't wait to uh, have you, hear from you. I know you got a lot in the works on your website, so I'm always checking out your website. Uh, Arnell, thanks for joining us. We love the magazine too. It's been a long 20 years. We've had an awful lot of fun printing this magazine, publishing, finding interesting things to talk about machine embroidery. So let's head over to camera two so we can talk about our Fred, sele <laughs> Fred fabric selection, designs, thread, our, and prepping the fabric, and then our hoop. So I'll see you over there. Okay. So here I have a beautiful large scale print. Wouldn't you agree? This is a K faucet. Now, because there is some contrast, I really, it's almost a tone on tone. But when I'm working with a fabric like this, I like to make a template of my block with a window, a window template. So I can move it around the fabric and determine what area I want to feature in my quilt block. It's not such, not so critical on this print, but on the next one, you'll see now we have a print that is very large scale. So if I want to center this medallion, I'm going to have to fussy cut and make sure that I have whatever seashells that I want to feature in the center. Um, and it's rather big for this quilt block size. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next one, which is actually the same fabric, but this time it's in a different colorway. And so again, make use the window template to audition the fabric inside so you can make sure you're featuring what you want to feature. Like here, I could just use the smaller scale items and that's a beautiful block unto itself. All right, now let's take a look at mini prints. This is often what we're using as kind of a modeled background. And when I use a print like this, I would choose one of two colors, either the white or the dark red. And if I use the red, it's going to blend into the fabric and my quilting will disappear and yet it will leave a textured finish. The white will, white thread would really allow it to pop. So that's choice for you, for sure. And then here we have a gingham, which is, you know, super cute, really adorable for baby quilts and so forth. But when you're working with something that is this graphic, and linear, it's wise to choose an embroidery design that has lots of swirls because if it has a linear pattern or a grid in the quilting, it will compete with that gingham. And I have some better examples of that. So let me show you that right here. Here's a uh, little clutch that's in progress. And this is a mini plaid. 
Now I have a mini grid on this, but because that's on an angle, it doesn't actually compete with my plaid. Here on this one, it is really competing. That white thread does stand out on that green and red. So I probably wouldn't make that my final selection. But if I am sold on a linear quilting pattern, just a straight vertical stitch, stitching line works very well on a plaid like this. So that's another option to consider. Okay, let's move on to a confetti type of fabric, another micro print. Here you have lots of freedom. If you choose white, again, you're just going to add texture. If you use any of these interesting colors besides the yellow, you will add a whole nother element of quilting to it. So, you know, if your border is orange, then you pick an orange thread that would help make it um, seamless. Now here's two really fun prints. I brought these in because I thought that they were good examples of the same colorway. And on this Greek key, I would definitely use a swirl because if I'm gonna use a vertical or horizontal straight line or even a diamond grid, it's too busy. A swirl on that would be fine. So when you have a print in this manner, that's really just a tossed polka dot that, that's not perfect. A swirl on this would be just as fun as it would on the Greek key. Now stripes can really be a challenge. Isn't this a beautiful striped fabric though? I love this for Christmas. Again, you want a swirl, you want some kind of decorative um, embroidery quilting design on this fabric. If you are stitching something with straight lines, you're going to compete with those wavy edges of the stripe and it will your quilting will look like it's off. So go in the opposite direction and select a swirl, swirly type of design. Now these Moda Grunge, oh my, I love the Moda Grunge. It comes in so many different colorways now, right? Here's this kind of mustard and a coral and this beautiful turquoise or teal, just beautiful. What I love most about these is this modeled um, colors that are added to the base mustard yellow. So I have a much lighter yellow and a darker gray. So I'm going to show you some um, different threads that you can use specifically on this teal one. So let's take a look at our embroidery design that I selected to decorate these Moda fabrics. And that is our new tapestry collection from Great Notions. This is a beautiful collection of quilting designs. And there's 22 unique designs in the collection. There's a CD inside. So you would purchase this, we'll ship it to your house. It's on special today. We'll talk about that in a minute. But look at all of these different embroidery designs that come with it. 22 different designs, each in three different sizes. So if you have a four inch hoop, five inch or six inch, you can use any of those um, hoops for these designs. And because they're running stitches, you can resize them in software and also at your machine because they're just straight running stitches. You're not going to have to worry about changing fills or any of that when you resize. So how versatile are they? Well, let's take a look. Here is the heart design that I have stitched. I'm going to move this quilt sandwich down so you can get a better look at it right here. So I stitched this block in a beautiful metallic thread. And you know, our Kingstar metallic thread is a beautiful thread, yet it's very fine. So it's going to add a very delicate finish to your quilt block. Now I've stitched it in some other colors. So let's take a look. In this corner, I stitched it in the exact same color as the fabric. It completely disappears. I imagine you cannot even see that there's a quilting design there, but there is. And it just adds texture. When we go a little lighter to a medium um, value of the same color, now we get to really see the feature of that design. But look at the interest that a medley thread adds. Here's a very delicate gradation of color and that's stitched out here. You can barely see how it moves from violet to yellow to white. But over on this sample, we have a dark pink and it goes all the way down to light pink. Isn't that fun? Look at all the different 
variations you get in the medley. And you know, it's a random dye. So it's not going to be two inches of light, two inches of medium and two inches of dark. It's random. So you never really know what's going to stitch next. So before I show you some other samples, I'm going to go check your comments and see what you're all saying. I know that you sometimes have questions. Oh, we have someone from California. Let's see. Sue Brown says, this is fantastic. She's learning. It's going to save her time. Um, and uh, Sue, you like those bright colors. Yeah, I like them too. You know, it's hard to select color. So let's take a look at another um, preview of color. I just dropped one, but here we have an even brighter red. Now look how pretty that is. It is just gorgeous how it pops on that teal. And if I am using this a coordinating fabric like that teal, I mean, this coral in the project, then quilting with that color, that's just beautiful. Look how that looks together, just gorgeous. And here I have a stronger medley. When I say stronger, I mean there's more variation between the lightest and the darkest colors. So you can see that it really does pop. Sometimes it blends a little softly with my uh, teal fabric and other times it really contrasts ni nicely. You can never go wrong with the lightest value of the same color in a quilting design if you want your quilting to pop, to really be visible. This is a very safe choice and one that I would use often because, you know, you know it's going to be successful. And, uh, oh, Marie Zeno is watching today. Hi, Marie. We have a little secret. We have another sister in the house here in Dallas that maybe I'll get to get on camera, but we'll see about that in a minute. But Anyway, uh, aren't these fun? These, oh, I just love this fabric, it's beautiful. So you can see I have part of this already hooped, right? So with all these different designs that come on tapestry, remember there are all these different designs that come on tapestry. So let's see how they go together. Here's my heart. And in my sample, what I did was I stitched that at a 45 degree angle in each corner. And that made a whole nother block for me. It was a complete new variation. It has a border design that I placed on the sashing in between each block. And it also has a cornerstone design that I will add in the corner of the table runner when it's complete. Well, let's take a look at some of those other blocks. And here is a beautiful design that has sc a scroll work on the outside. And yet in the middle, it's like a diamond. It's absolutely beautiful. So when you put two of these in a row, one on top of the other, and then two more, that's two hoopings. And look what you have. You, you get a really beautiful finished block. And um, I, I love that. I think that's very elegant. Let's look at one more. We have another one over here. Um, if you could see how many pieces of fabric I have on my table. I could just hear my friend Nancy Zeman telling me, do you need that? Do you need that? Put that out of the, out of the scene. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look. Here we have a five inch block. This is one of the designs that comes in three different sizes on the collection. And again, when I put those together, Oh, I mean, that is just beautiful. That fills an entire block. I could do it end to end to make my own large border on a larger quilt. Look at the interest that that adds. You have like a little swirly heart at each end, and yet those big feather tails really fill and add a lot of texture to any, any quilt sandwich that you have. Okay, so now let's go back to actually the fabric. How do we prep our fabric? Well, I piece my quilt top together or table runner, whatever it's going to be. And then I make my batting much larger. So I don't know that you can see this, but I have cut my batting about two inches larger and my backing is a larger than the finished size also. And that allows me some room so that when I hoop, I have enough fabric to get into the hoop. You Now you could, make it all the exact same size and you could sew a piece of muslin to the end so that you could have something in the hoop but really it's just easier to add a little batting a little backing i do pin 
Um, I placed safety pins about a hand's width apart. So I would have one at the corner, another one at the middle and the corner. And I would do that as I travel across the quilt. This project is a perfect example of why I like to use a perfect quilt template because my blocks are all the exact same size and yet I don't really want to print four templates of each of each block design so I can just use that perfect quilt template and then I know because it's the same size as the block and so is my embroidery design that that's going to work out just fine and when I'm at the machine I center my needle over that template remove it, and then I'm ready to stitch. Okay, and um, I think, are, do we, are there any questions? Let's see, Kayla, do we have questions today? Everybody's so smart. Okay, you just bear with me for one minute. And I want to show you that sometimes you don't even want a quilt. Sometimes when you make a little bag with a large scale print, you don't even need any quilting if it's that small, right? Just let that big fabric, that large scale print tell the story. And if it's small enough, you know, that's about a hand's width apart the seams. So you're not even going to need any quilting there. Okay. We have a special offer today, which is, um, $49.99, which is $10 off with free shipping. And you, if you order today, you will get that. We'll sh ship it out to you. And hi, Deborah, and hi, Arnell. We have a lot of people from, this, Kathy, you're from Benton, Arkansas. I wonder if you're getting rain today. We're about to get a lot of rain today. Okay, so I'm gonna move over to camera A so that we can say goodbye. And I'm gonna make my sister Mary Pat come in. You're gonna come in and say hi. Just poke your head in. She. She's here from uh, her home in Florida, and, she, and I'm just bringing her on camera. Just give her a kiss on camera and say, hey, Marie, Hi. my sisters. <laughs> this is the original stitching sister. She taught me how to sew when I was a lot younger, and then I passed it down to Marie. Mary Pat does beautiful work. Isn't it a wonderful thing to share sewing, quilting, and embroidery with family and friends and people that you meet out, out at events, right? So we have some exciting events coming up. Always check our website to see where Dime is going to be. Uh, we Our calendar is absolutely full all fall. So we hope that you'll go to an event and learn about a lot of the stuff that we teach here on Facebook Live. So we'll see you next week, same time. Next week, we're going to talk all about the shorty and quilting larger projects. And we'll have a special offer for you then too. Thanks for joining us.